Welcome to Simmons Field in Kenosha, Wisconsin for Game 25 of the 2020 Kenosha Series between the 9 and 15 K-Town Bobbers and the 15 and 9 Kenosha Kingfish. James Stanley back with you on the Northwoods League Baseball Network from Kenosha, Wisconsin. There's two games left here at Simmons Field in the 2020 Kenosha Series. The Kingfish players will return to their schools knowing that they won a regional title in the Northwoods League. But for the K-Town Bobbers, they snapped an eight-game skid last night as they beat the Kingfish 8-5, to five, and here is how it happened, their first win since August 7th. Reagan Clawwitter making the start for K-Town in the Bobbers' final home game of the series, but he was off to a rocky start. The Kingfish started out the game with three straight hits in the first inning. McKay Barney led off with a beautiful bunt down the third baseline. Look at this, he's safe at first. Then Mitchell Bubin backing him up behind him, follows with a double to bring Barney in and put the Kingfish up one to nothing. George Rosales got the third consecutive hit of the inning for Kenosha, putting Claw Witter in a jam with two on and no outs. The frame was far from over for Claw Witter. Next man up, Jack Thielen. He records the first out of the game on a ground out and extends Kenosha's lead to two. Then Matt Corman follows up with the fourth hit for Kenosha in the inning, and it's three to nothing. The inning finally ended for the Bobbers on a Drew Dyer strikeout, his fifth straight, with Clawwitter throwing 32 pitches, but his night was about to get a whole lot better. Meanwhile, Mitch Woletsky making his final start on the mound for Kenosha. He's off to a great start, striking out four batters in the first two innings of work. However, the Bobbers were getting ready to do some damage. Bottom of the third inning. Tucker Mitchell doubles in two runs, and the Bobbers are in business, trailing three to two. Later in the frame, Drew Dyer commits an error. The first of three for him on the night, and Mitchell scores to tie the game 3-3. Top of the fourth inning. Take a look at this. Jack Cavanaugh channeling his inner Willie Mays. What a play. The defense really helped Clawwitter stabilize and put together a quality start. Here's Woletsky in trouble in the bottom half of the inning. Cavanaugh, the hero moments ago, hits his second double of the night to give K-Town the lead at 5-3. Then C.J. Breen draws a bases loaded walk and it's six to three bobbers in front. K-Town's hit parade continued in the sixth inning. Mitchell with his second hit of the night drives in Marcus Klein to make it 7-3 and Breen follows with a sacrifice fly to score Kavanaugh to make it a five run advantage for the bobbers. But the game was about to take an interesting turn. The historic win streak on the line for Kenosha in the top of the ninth. Barney at the plate, he gets to first on an air by Marcus Klein. Mitchell Bubin followed with a single, and now there are two on with no outs. The Kingfish need base runners, and the Bobbers were about to help them out. The next batter, George Rosales, puts this one in play, but Nathan Ebersole boots it, and Barney scores. The Kingfish have a five-out inning to work with as they trail 8-4. to four. Next up, Jack Thielen at the plate sends it to right field, but wait, another error. Bubin scores, and the Bobbers have handed a six-out inning to the Kingfish on a silver platter, but can this inning get any weirder? Matt Corman at the plate. He is two for three with an RBI into the at-bat. Routine fly ball to center field. That could advance Rosales to third, but wait. Third base umpire Tim Heigl says he left early. Mike Picaro out to argue, but the point is mute. The game ends on a double play, and the Bobbers snap an eight-game skid, winning eight to five. Sawyer Phillips gets the save, Clawwitter the win, and Woletsky took the loss. One difference maker for the Bobbers last night was outfielder Jack Cavanaugh. The UW-Milwaukee Panther has played in just seven games. He was a great addition for Donnie Scott. Cavanaugh is batting 448 with 13 hits and six RBIs. Not only that, he has five doubles with all five coming in the last three games, including two doubles last night. He might be the most dynamic center fielder of the series, with not only production at the plate, but a gold glove in the outfield. But on the other side for the Kingfish, one of Kavanaugh's teammates at UWM, Jack Thielen, has really been tearing it up for Kenosha in the series. The all-star candidate from West Bend, Wisconsin, is hitting 268 with a 936 OPS. He's the series leader in doubles with seven and is tied for the series lead in home runs with Mitchell Bubin. They both have three. Thielen had a five RBI game last week, something that no Kingfish has done in two years. Bobber's base runners have been frozen on the bases because there is no stealing on Thielen. He has a cannon for an arm and has been part of the three-headed monster that also includes Rosales and Falia. Between the three of them, they've held the Bobbers to fewer than 10 stolen bases in the series. Now let's take a look at the top five home run leaders in the 2020 Kenosha series. Mitchell Boob and Jack Thielen both have three. They're in the number one spot. Then it's three Bobbers who are no longer with the team. Drew Benefield, Brett Harris, and Thomas Rudinsky, as well as Jordan Shulifan, who's not on the list, all tied at two. 
that the Kingfish, however, do have 10 as a team, and that has helped them take the 2020 Kenosha Series title. The Kingfish have really turned up the heat on the base pads. They've swiped 30 bases in the series, including several in the last three games. Here are the leaders, which are dominated by the Kingfish. Evan Albrecht at first, he has seven. McKay Barney, Mitchell Boobin tied for second with five. George Rosales has three, and the only bobber that has Glimpse the top five as Marcus Klein. He has two, but he's tied with a bunch of other players. Let's transition to pitching with Brock Weirather on the mound tonight. These are the top ERAs among starting pitchers in the series. Mike Edwards finishing with a 2.35 ERA. Kyle Gendron made his last start two weeks ago. His ERA at 3.33 with Bryce Conitzer, an ERA of 3.94 for the Bobbers. And Brock Weirather, the starter tonight, at 4.18 in the fourth spot, and Ryan O'Hara. Rounding out the top five at 5.40 as he heads back to Champaign, Illinois. Here are the starting pitchers for game 25 of the series. Cal Jablonski will get his first start of the summer. He has an 0-2 record in two and two-third innings pitched. His last two appearances out of the pen have been for a third of an inning each. He has a 6.75 ERA, giving up three runs on three hits. Jablonski has four strikeouts with the Kingfish hitting 300 against him on the season. The senior from MSOE will have his work cut out for him tonight. And for Kenosha, Brock Weirather will make his final start of the series. In five starts, the Grinnell College Pioneer has an ERA of 4.18 and 23 and two-third innings. He has a good walk-to-strikeout ratio, just two walks compared to 14 strikeouts. In his last start on August 15th, Weirather pitched to the sixth inning, making it the most innings for him in a start this summer. He also struck out seven batters that night for a single game high. It will be a tough game for the Bobbers, but last night they proved they can find ways to win. The Kingfish look to rebound from yesterday's uncharacteristic 8-5 loss. Two games to go in the 2020 Kenosha Series. Game 25 is tonight. We'll be back with starting lineups after this.